Well, welcome to our last lesson um, together. It's a little sad, but also pretty exciting. Um, we hope you guys have enjoyed the past four lessons, um, especially our last one with embroidery. Um, I know we all kind of had fun trying to think of more creative lessons for you guys. Um, but yeah, this is our last one. Very exciting. Um, so I guess I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, so for today, um, our final project is going to be to combine two different um, mediums together into a big final project. Um, so looking at the things that we've done in the past, so we've done print making with the plastic bags as well as like the stamping if you have any styrofoam. Um, and we've also looked at embroidery and uh, weaving, right? And then also book binding if you wanted to incorporate that you can. Um, but before we talk about like the project a little bit more, um, I wanted to have you guys bring out your um, visual journals um, and grab something to write with. Um, and then spend five minutes thinking about um, the prompt growth. And that's been our theme for this uh, lesson, these past five lessons. Um, so when I talk about growth, what comes to your mind? So maybe it's like your own individual growth and maybe like change, like growth with like a caterpillar, like there are three different stages or like growth of trees or um, there, there's been a lot of change recently. So thinking about changing your own life, change that you've seen, how you've grown, um, just take a few minutes, pause the video and think about all the different ways that you've seen growth. And it can be anything, and you can draw pictures, whatever comes to your mind. Okay, so um, after you guys have jotted down some ideas, um, after you're kind of getting your creative juices flowing, um, now we're going to be talking about our final project. So like I said, we're going to be combining two different um, types of art making um, together. And we're going to be thinking about growth. Um, and going off of that theme. So if you wrote down something about maybe like a tree and thinking about the growth of a tree or the growth of a plant, um, we're going to be kind of going with that theme or anything that really relates to the theme of growth. Um, but you're required in a sense, and these are like very soft requirements, um, but we really want to encourage you guys to use more than one um, different types of art making process. But whatever like project you really enjoyed the most, maybe you can go back to that. Um, so if you really enjoyed uh, the printmaking process, maybe you can kind of look at the growth of, like I said, I'm kind of going off the idea of the tree or something, but the growth of a tree. Um, and you can include maybe embroidery or maybe you can look at book binding and how can you like maybe you can do that same type of printmaking on the books that you make. Um, so we really want you to try to look back at the past lessons um, and if you need a reminder you know if you aren't quite sure you remember how to do the printmaking or maybe you want to try a different type of book binding or another type of weaving technique um, look back at the previous videos if you need any additional help um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So looking at two different types of mediums and looking at growth. So how can you portray growth visually? Um, and this can be abstract, so it doesn't have to be representational. So it doesn't have to be something like a tree. Maybe um, it's like the growth of a musician or an artist. So you like listen to their soundtrack um, and see how their music has changed and try to like portray that visually. Um, so there are a lot of different ways you can go with this, but we really kind of wanted to give you a prompt to get your ideas flowing, um, and then you can kind of pick whichever medium you really like the best um, and go from that. But before you guys start, um, we have three different demos for you. So each one of us uh, made our own final project with the same theme, the theme of growth. Um, so you guys can watch what we did, get some inspiration from that. Um, and before you start, uh, we encourage you guys to spend a few minutes in brainstorming time. So in your journal, just like thinking about, like looking back at that, the first little um, time that we spent in our journal, just like jotting down ideas. Whatever ideas you liked best, maybe you circle them, you come back to it, and in this brainstorming time, you kind of draw like, well, how can I like encourage or demonstrate growth through the use of printmaking? And you can draw some stuff out. But we really want you guys to, to plan out what you're doing before you jump right in. Um, it kind of helps give you a plan um, so that you know, almost like a blueprint, so you know what you're, you're going to be doing. 
But anyway, so instead of um, jumping into a history, um, instead of that, we're just going to go straight into demos. Um, and then after the three demos, Brianna's going to give us a short rundown of her college experience. Um, and then we're going to close it up. But we really hope you guys enjoy this final lesson. Um, after you're done, make sure you take a picture of it, take a few. Um, make sure you document it so we can see what you guys did. And if you're able to, we would love to kind of understand how it relates to the course. If you want to write a few sentences, um, that'd be awesome. But anyway, we're really excited to see what you guys are doing. And can't wait for you guys to see our demos as well. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Lily. I wanted to walk you guys through my brainstorming and um, show exactly like how I came to my idea and what I was thinking about. So as you can see, I started working in my journal and spent a few minutes coming up with thoughts, um, ideas, images that I thought um, reminded me of the word growth. Um, and I thought of growth as like my personal growth, growth of a plant, tape measure, ladder, stairs, um, pretty much everything in between. And then I spent some time looking at an artist. Um, her name is Annie M. France, and she actually is French. Um, and what I loved about her work was the fact that you can see that she wove um, into a piece of fabric. Um, so it was an unconventional type of weaving, and I wanted to try to um, replicate this with my own piece. So I used weaving as well as printmaking in my piece. And now you can kind of see um, on the other page of my journal, um, I sketched out an idea, um, and I would highly suggest that you do this as well. Um, it kind of helps make a blueprint for what you're doing, um, so you know what steps to go in. Um, and one thing I also noted was, how does weaving relate to growth? And one thing I kind of thought of was weaving um, through the knots of life. And I think that's something that um, everything, everything really relates to. So anyway, now you can enjoy the rest of my demo video.
Hey guys, um, it's Brianna here and I am gonna share with you guys uh, just a few artists um, maybe that you can take inspiration from for your final project um, and I definitely felt inspired by them. Um, a couple of them are new to me um, and one of them I've I've known about, um, but I just thought I would go ahead and share their work with you and a little bit about what they do with you. So yeah, here we go. Um, so the first artist that I have chosen um, to share with you all, her name is Sarah Walton, um, and I came about her work uh, just like browsing online, honestly. Um, and the reason why her work stuck out to me uh, was because she, her style is very unique and I thought that she was like embroidering but actually she's using a sewing machine um so I'll pop some like pictures up here so you guys can see um and even though she uses a process that's like technically different from the ones that we've shared with you I wanted to go ahead and uh, share her work with you anyways because she uses some uh some of her techniques um I'm actually using in my project and maybe you could too uh, but anywho uh, I'll read a little like excerpt from her website um and yeah <laughs> her website it says I make illustrations using my sewing machine with black thread as the pencil and fabric as the paper and paint my main inspiration comes from people, their relationships with each other, and dogs in everyday life. I'm inspired by those simple moments of happiness like holding hands, dancing, waking up in bed on a weekend. I try to freeze these moments in time like a photograph creating a joyful memory and print it on fabric. So I thought that was pretty cute, honestly. Um, and yeah, all of her work, um, she uses a sewing machine, which is pretty incredible. I mean, I know how to sew on a sewing machine, but it's kind of tricky, pretty hot, difficult. Um, but one of the things that stuck out to me about her work is she uses some uh, like fabric, like underlay, like under her, um, under like the marks that she like sews. Um, that makes sense. Anywho, like she uses fabric and then will like sew on top of it, like fabric that was like um, gonna be used for like clothing or something. Um, and in mine, I'm gonna, I do the same, or my project I'm making, I'm doing the same thing with like leaves like I painted on t-shirt and then I cut those out and then um, I'm using those to embroider on top of my surface that makes sense but yeah um my work is really cool and honestly it looks like those continuous like line drawings which I think are really cool too so yeah Sarah Walton um and then the next artist I want to share with you guys um you probably have heard of her name before her name is Faith uh Wrinkled um and she was born in 1930 in Harlem New York she's still alive today um honestly her work is really incredible. Um, she was a painter, mixed media sculptor, performance artist, writer, teacher, lecturer, um, also an activist. Um, she was a really powerful, or still is very powerful, uh, especially um, like female um, figure um, in the art world and just in general. Um, but I wanted to talk about her story quilts. Um, like I said, if you've heard about her before, you've probably um, uh, heard about her story quilts. Um, basically, she has like, or she's like painted on quilts, um, and she's telling stories of the past. Um, she's just like basically expanding on the traditional like uh, quilting um, process. Um, but I thought that I would share her work with you just because of her like incredible ways of like telling stories uh, visually um, with her like textile work. And I thought maybe you could pull, you all could pull um, inspiration from her if you were wanting to tell like a story or like some sort of narrative um, with your final project. Um, but so anyways, she paints on these quilts um, and she also incorporates text too. Um, and she would create series of works that would frame around um, sometimes like one particular story or like a similar story um, and they could would connect to each other. Um, but and a lot most of these story quilts uh, related to her political beliefs and also just experiences as an African American feminist visual artist. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, she's a wonderful, wonderful artist. Um, and I encourage you all to look more at her work. There's a bunch of videos, like interviews online, um, if you feel compelled to uh, look into her work a little bit more. Um, yeah. Um, and then the last artist that I also just kind of came about, like on the internet, just kind of like browsing. Um, her name, I think I'm saying this correctly, is Victoria Udondian. Um, she is a mixed media and installation 
artist. Um, she was born in Lagos, and I believe she lives in New York currently. Um, she has a lot of different uh, kinds of like work, um, mainly sculptural. Um, I wanted to focus in on some of the weavings that she's done. Uh, these are just incredible, first of all. Um, and by no means am I saying, all right, y'all have to make weavings this big. Um, but her work is just, especially these weavings, like when I was looking across at them online, uh, I was just like, oh my gosh, uh, she has a very unique style. Um, um, and the way she works with like fibers is, uh, is pretty awesome. Um, but I said insulation, and if y'all don't know what that means, um, most of the time insulations uh, take up an entire like space um, and so artists will usually go to that space and then produce their work there so like the work basically like embodies the entire room so when viewers come into this space they're basically walking into this entire like art piece and it's just like surrounding them entirely uh, pretty cool but um her weavings uh, are you know essentially the same thing um, this, they're very large um, but I wanted to also just share like how um many materials she's using like looks like different like, t-shirts or like sheets even and clothes um like they have a very uh just a very like unique style that i've never really seen um in other artists before um but yeah so those are the three artists that i want to share with y'all um as far as what i am going to be doing um for our demonstration I have uh, decided to utilize embroidery and weaving, and so I wanted to make like a small like tapestry just to like hang up on uh, the wall, or I don't, I don't really know truly what I'm going to do with it. Um, but essentially, um, I had this idea popping in my mind and I didn't think of anything else, so I just went with that. Um, because we are wanting y'all to kind of center your uh, projects um, around the theme of like growth um, and relate to that either through like telling a story with your work or um, I don't know if there's like a feeling or experience that you want to share or just a concept or you know literally whatever you want um, just have it kind of be centered around this theme of like growth um, but I thought of the idea of like metamorphosis and I hope probably y'all already know what that is um, it's just like the process of like when a caterpillar turns into a chrysalis and then becomes a butterfly and I thought that honestly it's just like a pretty beautiful like process and I was thinking about how like we as humans also experience like different forms of like metamorphosis um continually continuously excuse me like as we uh live life like we're constantly changing and growing and learning and just forming into the people that we uh we become and so I, I am choosing to I guess um show this like process of metamorphosis more literally with my tapestry um, I decided to like embroider um, the caterpillar and the chrysalis and the butterfly um, and then just like have small patches of weaving on the t-shirt and yeah I, I'm using all materials that I've found at home um, and most of them the same materials y'all should have um, been received um, with those like supply bags I, I cut up an old t-shirt um, to use as like my surface um, so yeah, um, that is about it. I'll go ahead and share with you guys uh, my process in making the tapestry. So enjoy.
Hey everyone. So the thing that we're asking you guys to do this week is to combine two mediums of something we've already taught you guys. So what I chose to do for my demo was I did embroidery and printmaking. So just to, again, kind of mix things up this week, um, we're also gonna be talking about um, history and our exemplar artists on top of our demos. So I'll just go right into that. So we've already kind of gone over the history of embroidery and the history of printmaking in our two past videos. So I'm not gonna bore you guys and do all that again, but instead I wanted to kind of brief you guys on the history of graphic apparel, I guess for lack of a better term, like fashion and how art and design kind of wove and weaves into that. So the first known graphic t-shirt was actually seen in the 1939 film of The Wizard of Oz when Scarecrow is getting all fixed up by all the handymen. They're all wearing these bright green t-shirts that have bright bold letters that say Oz right across the bust. And so that is actually our first recording of what a printed graphic t-shirt would be, which I thought was super interesting. So like I'm gonna have to go back and watch the movie. <laughs> graphic tees really gained popularity like among the people in the 50s when Disney started to print their characters on t-shirt and that became like the thing was to wear a Disney character t-shirt until the counterculture in the 70s where it was like well we don't want to do that anymore it's too mainstream <laughs> Um, started to print band logos and political statements on t-shirts, but these started to gain even more popularity. And then with the materialization branding in the 80s and 90s, we start seeing brands start to put their names on t-shirts like Adidas and Nike. So that's kind of where we're at today where graphic tees are now like, everybody has at least one t-shirt and it's like the staple just as much as like blue jeans. So a few of the artists that inspired me for this week, one is called Julia Fletcher, who I followed her on Instagram for forever now. She has such a strong sense of design when it comes to her graphic work and I really implore you guys to look at her Instagram or her personal website, but this is one of her concept t-shirts that she did and I love the cure so I was like, yes. <laughs> now I'm gonna butcher his name, but this is actually one of my favorite YouTube I just went all over my social media this week. Um, <laughs> but one of my favorite YouTubers, his YouTube name is Schmosh. I really don't know how to pronounce it, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name either. But Brian Paranaud. Paranaud. Paran. Paranaud. Something like that. Anyway, his entire YouTube, if you guys want to look at him and check him out. Um, he does, he goes over all these different art processes. He goes over so much range of mediums. And so this is something you can actually buy on his own YouTube, like merchandise of his like brand. But what he did was he printed his shirt. Oh my God. He printed his face on a shirt on the front pocket and on the back and embroidered on top of it, which is kind of what I did for this week. My last person, who I got inspiration from this week was Eva Stalinsky, who is such a strong printmaker. Again, another Instagram person, <laughs> but it is so fascinating. On her Instagram, she posts videos of her screen printing onto her t-shirts and screen printing is just like a fascinating process to me. For each of these people, I thought that Julia had such a strong sense of design with her work. Brian has such a strong sense of application and being like, this perfect marriage between the two mediums with his work. I have a bird clock, but now you guys know it's four o'clock. <laughs> Anyways, Eva, I felt like has such a strong sense of the printing part of it, but also like each of her works look like a piece of art. And that's kind of where I wanted to go with my design for this week. So to show you guys what I did instead of just talking about it all the time, let me go get that. And I actually can't because I'm wearing it. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so hold on. Let me turn around and like figure out the best possible way to do this. Oh wait. So here was my design for this past week. I think it's really cute. I'll post like an actual picture as well. So let me do that. But <laughs> let me show you guys how I made it. <laughs> so the first thing I started out doing was sketching out my design that I wanted. Now, thinking about a theme for this week about growth and everything and my personal thought is that I'm your teacher and I'm rooting for you in your guys' growth. So I wanted to do carrots. So here's my sketchbook and all my designs in it. 
and then you guys have seen all this if you watched all our other demos and so I started to do the printmaking styrofoam stamp method um, and so here I am with my carrot and I started to do like the top like green part of a carrot but it was really hard to cut out and like trace so I decided against it <laughs> um, so here I am laying out my shirt and you can see this horrible oil stain I am trying to cover up but then I just start stamping. I wanted a really warm theme for this because the green is such like a grayish warm like muted kind of color. Um, so that's the kind of color palette I stuck to and the paint didn't come out as bright as I was hoping but it didn't really matter because I was going to embroider like outlines on it anyway. Um, but there I am stamping all my colors and I did a little outline of where I wanted to embroider my leaves and my words I went ahead and sketched and magic! It's all embroidered! <laughs> you guys already know how to do that so I'm not gonna go over but here is my final design. I hope you guys like it. Hey guys, um, it's me. Um, <laughs> I am here to share with you all a little bit about um, my college experience. I haven't really done that thus far uh, with our lessons, um, so we thought it would be a good idea if I did that today. Um, but I guess as far as where to start, um, so <laughs> I have um, been at App for uh, a little over two years now. Um, I and, and ah, excuse me, <laughs> I am an art education major and I have been since the day, day that I came into uh, college. I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher and then I went in high school, I was like, oh, I wanna teach art. Um, and App was actually the only school that I applied to. Uh, when I tell people that, they kind of they laugh. They're like, what? Like, ah, that's crazy. And I just, I just remember being like, I don't want to go anywhere else, so I'm just not going to waste my time applying to other schools. And I had friends that were like, that's, you know, that's like crazy of you to do, but I was just like, mm -hmm, that's where I want to go. And um, I don't regret any, any bit of that. I definitely think at Boone is like where I'm supposed to be um, for this period of my life, I guess. Um, but anywho, yeah, besides that, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm an art education major. Um, and talking a little bit about my classes uh, so far. Um, it's funny because, and I feel like a lot of art majors are like this as well, as they kind of um, see themselves somewhere in the middle of like uh, being in the art building versus like the education building. Um, I definitely spend so much more time in the art building um, versus the education building, but you kind of like are somewhere in the middle. <laughs> um, but as far as all of my classes that I've taken so far, I've just been truly grateful um, for the community that I've found in those classes, um, especially my art education classes. Um, watching my peers and I just like grow um, and learn together um, in a very, and it's just like a safe space, um, I would say, um, and being around like a lot of uh, like-minded people um, in those art ed classes has been um, a really great experience so far. Um, and not only in those classes, but um, even in the art building as well. Um, and I think that this goes for other majors too. You know, you kind of find your your place um, and it takes time, but you do. And then uh, just being in Way, which is the art building, um, like I said, there's just so much community um, to be found, even with people you necessarily don't know too well, but you get to know them because you run into them every day or you know, something like that. Um, but as far as a couple of my favorite classes so far, I didn't want to share um, with you. I love clay and working with um, clay and uh, making ceramic art has been something that I hadn't done before college and I took my first ceramics class um, at the beginning of last year knew nothing about clay and now it's like one of my favorite mediums to work with um, it's just a great I don't know I love it because the process is literally just like your hands and the clay nothing else um, I mean we can use other tools or whatever but when you're like manipulating the clay it's just like your hands and, and the clay and that's it and I, I love that <laughs> I love that um, process um, and let's see, well, before I got to college, I was very just like into drawing and I was like, oh, I just want to draw and that's it. But now I'm like, there's, my eyes have just been opened up to like so much more. Um, there's so much more out there, especially in, in like terms of like different art mediums. 
um, that you can work with. Uh, so yeah, um, as far as college in general, I would hope um, that, or I, sorry, I don't know how I'm trying to say this. <laughs> um, I would love it for as many people to have um, the college experience as possible, um, just because I feel like you grow so much as a person and an ind individual um, when you're in college. I do think like everyone does has have their own like unique college experience um, that's like tailored to them, and either it being really great or having a lot of bumps in the road. Um, <laughs> I think that. Um, it's still a worthwhile um, period of life um, or frame of your, like, your life and I think everyone should um, endure that, that college experience. Um, I think that I'm just really grateful for all the people that I've been exposed to, um, the different perspectives that I've you know learned about and just the different people that I've uh, grown to be friends with or just you know be classmates or you just learn so much about uh, other people and like where they're from and um, I just it's it's great um, you and as you do that um, I think you learn a lot more about yourself too um, and I guess that kind of goes into my last thing I wanted to talk about as far as like being college like I feel like you change so much as a person um, in college just I mean and not in bad ways I just like thinking like uh, I remember when my parents like first dropped me off like my first um, day moving into the dorms and like thinking about myself then versus now I feel like a, a completely different person um and in all good ways um just you just learn so much about yourself and and the world <laughs> and um where you want to be and who you, who you see yourself being um so there's a lot of change and a lot of growth that happens um uh, when you you know when you go through college and so I think that's why we wanted um we wanted to uh, tailor a lot of these lessons to be centered around that theme of growth um, as all of you young individuals are entering um, college or, you know, in a couple years or a few years. Um, just, it's great to recognize and take a second to think about how much you've changed. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but that's a little bit about me and I hope that you all, um, enjoyed learning about that i guess but yeah <laughs> hey guys so happy last lesson oh my gosh y'all have made it so far you can see i am totally in my end of year party get up i didn't have a party hat and i didn't have any like little party horns but i had a straw hat and a ukulele so we could just do that <laughs> but i'm gonna take it off because i look ridiculous all right hold on a second <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so hello and welcome to our end of year summer session party. We can't have one together because we're not in person, but we can totally have one asynchronously. So here I am sitting in my prom dress. I'm sitting here crying in my prom dress. <laughs> here I have my favorite shirt on and I am drinking some of my favorite tea out of my favorite mug and I am talking to my favorite people and I'm just taking some time out to do something special for myself so even though we can't technically have a special thing together totally take some time to celebrate because you guys have made it so far and I'm so proud of you oh my god speaking of favorites I would love for you guys for your last journal entry talk about some of your favorite things from this past session it doesn't necessarily have to be about our class but just like your favorite thing through Upward Bound you can talk about your favorite art piece you can talk about your favorite medium that you've worked with your favorite thing that you made your favorite teacher no, please don't do that. <laughs> but definitely take a moment and just kind of self-reflect a little bit. I know that's kind of what the gist of our whole lesson was this week, was reflecting and accumulating together this project of mishmash. Um, but just go ahead and take a moment and reflect on your favorite things. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a second to do that. Welcome back. I hope you have done some very meaningful self-reflection. In all reality, I hope that 
Upward Bound and this session and we have been meaningful to you guys. I hope this has been as great of an experience for you guys as it has been for us. Even though we're technically your teachers, we are still students ourselves and so this has totally been something meaningful for me and an absolute growing and learning experience and I'm really thankful to you guys for helping us get to where we are. Really, I know I'm definitely gonna grow from it. <laughs> also, speaking of, thank you to everyone who filled out the feedback forms this past week. We loved reading your guys' responses and what you guys had to say, and thank you for being honest. I really do appreciate that, because again, like I said, we're still students and we're trying to learn and figure out what works and what doesn't work. We really appreciate you guys saying that, and I'm sorry we couldn't get to some of your suggestions before our own sessions ended, but my future students will thank you guys. Also, side note to the two people who suggested Half Alive and Daniel Caesar as like some songs to listen to. We are now best friends. I hope you guys know that and are okay with that. <laughs> but you guys should totally check out I Don't Know How But They Found Me's Social Climb and Daniel Caesar's Death and Chaxes. You guys would love it. <laughs> So anyway, going back to being serious again, kind of touching back on me saying that like, we are students, like Brianna, Lily and I are art students at a college, Appalachian State University. And I know you guys are gonna get ready to be thinking about if you haven't already been thinking about college and have like your sights set on a certain place. But Brianna and Lily and I are living like the college dream. <laughs> But we have totally been through it and are still going through like this college process. So if you guys ever have questions or want to reach out about anything art, college, or even App State related, like we are here for you. Just because the summer is ending doesn't mean that we go away. So <laughs> totally reach out to us if you guys ever have any questions about anything. Like we are here for you guys forever and always. We are primary sources to some of the questions you guys might have and I like talking to you so please <laughs> but just send us emails and reach out and we will be more than happy to answer any of your guys's questions and I guess that kind of wraps up everything I have to say really and truly thank you guys so much for being awesome and for working with us as we work with you guys. Um, I hope that this was so exciting for you guys and you guys have all the best luck and I'm sending you all my wishes on the summer and this next school year as I know lots of things are uncertain but we are here for you guys always and forever and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your summer. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's lesson and don't be a stranger. Bye. <laughs>